Let's say you wanted to help the people of Palestine and would like to donate some money to the government there. You would most probably do it by a simple wire transfer or use your credit or your debit card or even more simply send cash. But there's a problem. The state of Palestine is ruled by Hamas, a political party which is designated as a terrorist group by the UN and other countries and your donation would get you into trouble. Why? Because all modes of payment existing today are regulated by the central bank which in turn is controlled by the government. All such transfers are deeply monitored and recorded. There is no way you can covertly send money to anyone without the knowledge of your government. But in 2008, an unknown creator by the name Santoshi Nakamoto invented the Bitcoin. This digital currency smashed the traditional method of payments and transfers and introduced a process by which one can transfer money to anyone without going through a bank or any regulations. Let's have a deeper look on how the terrorists began exploiting this technology for their operations and what has caused the value of Bitcoin to explode from $300 to $61,000 in just five years. Terrorists around the world raise funds by various means. It might be predominantly through donations, but this is not sustainable and hence most terrorist groups around the world rely on other sources. For example, Taliban before coming to power raised funds through the sale of drugs. They took control of mines and exhorted money from ongoing legal and illegal mining operations. They also exhorted money from all businesses operating in their area of control. But all this was done using cash. Cash is bulky and moving cash is very much traceable. So much transparent that UN was able to give a breakup of the funds raised by the Taliban. Bitcoin is a decentralized digital currency without a central bank or a single administrator. It can be sent from user to user on the peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin network without the need for intermediaries. Transactions are verified by network nodes through cryptography and recorded in a public distributed ledger called blockchain. The cryptocurrency was invented in 2008 by an unknown person or a group of people using the name Santoshi Nakamoto. Bitcoin has risen from total obscurity to an asset every government fears. Its value has skyrocketed from just $387 in 2016 to $62,000 in October 2021. It has given a CAGR of 175%, an exorbitant growth rate compared to real estate which gives only 8-10% to CAGR annually. To buy and sell Bitcoin, one must open an account in one of the cryptocurrency exchanges like the Bitstamp, Coinbase, ItBit and Kraken. Anyone with a valid identification or KYC documents can open an account with one of these exchanges. Buying and selling of cryptos happen in these exchanges. The new concept of decentralized currency, its high value and most importantly its volatility has created great interest in the common public, mainly the youths who have started trading in cryptos to a great extent. One of the first terrorist organization to use digital currency like Bitcoin was the Hamas, which is based out of the Gaza Strip. Since it is listed as a terrorist organization by the UN, it had to come up with some innovative ways to fund itself. Bitcoin was the answer. To buy and sell Bitcoin, an individual needs to create a digital wallet, which is also his digital address, and also register himself with a trading exchange like Coinbase. That's where all the trading happens. This is the simplest setup. However, in this setup, the digital address of the trader can be easily tracked. The modus operandi of Hamas is that its military wing, the Al Qasam Brigade, would put up an advertisement in its official website requesting donations in cryptos. On the ad would appear a QR code. Any donor seeking to donate needed to scan the QR code and make the payment in bitcoins. During earlier days, the Hamas used American exchanges like the Coinbase. But after the crackdown by the US authorities, it was kicked out of all the established crypto exchanges. The Hamas then came up with an ingenious plan. Instead of depending on exchanges and their wallets, the Hamas created a customized software to generate new wallet addresses for each new donations. 
Since 2019, every time a donor scanned the QR code, a new digital address would be created. Since no two addresses are alike, millions of new addresses would be created. Hence, tracing and blacklisting these new addresses became almost impossible. In fact, this method was so effective that the Al Qasim website has a video tutorial and a wallet address generator to create a fresh digital address for each donation. Donation is one way of raising funds, but cryptos can also be mined. This can be another lucrative business. An anonymous source in anti-money laundering estimated the Terra Group's Bitcoin mining brought in 195,000 worth of cryptos in 2019 alone. It's not just the Hamas who have started using cryptocurrency, but other terrorist networks like the ISIS and Al-Qaeda have replicated the Hamas technique of fundraising. Countries around the world have recognized this menace and have taken countermeasures. In July this year, Israel's National Bureau of Counterterrorism seized around 84 wallets controlled by the Hamas. These wallets had a mixed holding of cryptos like the Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Ethereum, etc. Around 7.7 .7 million US dollars were recovered from these wallets. In spite of all the risk and volatility, cryptocurrency is actually becoming more popular and an increasing number of people are opening crypto digital wallets. This is evident from the ever-increasing value of the Bitcoin. Recently, the Indian Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, in his national speech requested all democratic countries to unilaterally decide what to do with the cryptos. Also, India is on the verge of formulating a new law to regulate the usage of cryptocurrency in India. While the terrorists continue to use the cryptos, the government around the world keep a close watch on its usage. If you like this video, please subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.